Hey guys, welcome back to Artosis Cast. Amazing, some Protoss for Sergs got played on the ladder. We have here in the bottom left uh, someone who I have recently hyped up quite a bit, saying that I think that the reason there are no Protoss Sponge was is because he doesn't take the game seriously enough. It is Rain and his opponent, someone I have casted countless times, uh, and one of the best, most underrated Zergs in the world, it's Saxory. Uh, so these two actually ended up playing like five games on the ladder. So uh, I love it when we have a little series like that. I'm not sure if I'll cast every single one, but I think probably I will <laughs> since we haven't had enough PVZs. Um, yeah, anyways, you know, I, when I mentioned about Flash and Rain and how like Rain is that good, I did see a lot of comments like, well, no, Bisu, he, he changed the game. Yes, Bisu, obviously. Uh, has had a bigger impact on StarCraft. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. And Bisu's still, to this day, a fantastic player. Uh, but Rain is... Rain is like one of those talents where you're like, oh, this guy's unfairly good <laughs> for like how much he plays and everything. Uh, but I think, I think a lot of people that spend a lot of time analyzing StarCraft and stuff would agree with my assessment on him, where it's like this guy really is just smarter than other Protoss players. The guy comes back, gets active for one month, and can go to ASL finals. And it's like, oh, but what about when he lost to Light one-sidedly? It's like, yes, that, that happened, and that does happen. <laughs> you know, they, they, you can have bad losses. Uh, but yeah, I really do think if he was a full-time, like, try-hard StarCraft-only player, this guy would have a ton of championships by now. But, uh, Anyways, you know, a great player. Obviously, that doesn't take away from other Protosses being good players. This is not a zero-sum game. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. We'll see what he ends up doing here against Saxory. I do think that Rain has some pretty awesome PvZ. Uh, he is always... His PvZ is always something I think about while I'm casting any PvZ because he did kind of... In my eyes, watching the games that I've watched over the time that I've watched, I feel like he is the genesis point for the faster Dragoon range and heavier Dragoon comps with like uh, a lower speed law count in the early game, which I think is is incredibly important. Uh, you know, it, obviously there's places for both, but uh, the amount of times that you see just like the super speed lot heavy players eventually just get worn out by mass hydralisk right it, 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 i think the the range dragoon play is such an important step in pvz evolution anyways this is a one gateway uh, zealot uh zealot uh pressure right like he is getting in here and and punching some drones a little bit Bunch of lings come out. He did throw down the pile in there while we were talking, which blocked that hatchery, which is really annoying for Saxory. Gets behind these mineral patches, which again, very annoying. And look at that. This is exactly the placement you want here. The probe can help to hit. One probe hit plus two zealot hits uh, equal a dead zergling. So, you know, he does as well as he can trading there. The zergling's going to end up clearing that. Forge on the way. Multiple zealots out here while he does get that nexus and slips another probe out to get some good scouting. Notice how he goes along this wall. He's not 100% sure of where every Overlord is. Uh, this is a very common Overlord sitting spot, and it does not see to here. So if you're very tight bringing your units up the side, you can sneak around Overlords. A very common tactic on Radeon right now. So the Zerglings started to run across, but they see the probe. So a couple will turn around and go after it. The others will watch for Zealots coming out. They might even punch the gate a little bit, but I don't, I don't think so. It's like, you can do this. You know, we... We see this all the time in PvZ where a few lings hit there and the others sit here. But there's so many zealots here that it doesn't seem like that's something that's going to be that impactful. Now, as the probe gets in, he did see a lair. Or maybe that started just after when Paz goes back and sees the lair. So now knows, okay, this is not like a three-hatch Hydra type play. Zergling speed is on the way here. But now five zealots are coming out across the map. He has six speedlings here. They could technically run by and he'd get in with about three into the main base based on that, that placement. Or maybe he could go over here and keep more alive. Uh, but yeah, I think you're going to need to keep these out to try to counter this zealot pressure. Now, the zealots are coming over. A bunch of speedlings popping out at the moment. 
And these zealots, oh, they're trying to get behind the minerals. And look at this, a mass surround of the speedlings. A couple drones come up to fight, too. In fact, even pulls a third drone. And this was very efficient for Saxer. He actually does a fantastic job at reducing that zealot count right now. Those zealots being wiped out. Third hatchery is finally done here for Saxery as well. Stargate is started here for Rain to start getting some Corsairs out. It feels honestly to me like Saxery has done a little bit better against the Zealot pressure than we've seen Rain do with the Zealot pressure. Now, if those Zealots had gotten behind these mineral patches, I think we'd be in a different spot. But as is, you know, a very, very good job here by Saxery. Now... The Speedlings sitting outside the choke. They can't really attack in or anything like that. Double Stargate. No way. No way. Wasn't expecting to see this. You know, definitely something good to mix in. But if this was, if this turns out to be like Force Scourge and Hydralis Den, then, uh, you know, Rain's going to be in a lot of trouble. Generally, you're not going to have Storm in time to stop a, a Hydralis bust. And you're going to have to make about a million cannons if you open double Stargate and they don't commit to any Mutalisks. That's just kind of how that works out. But if they do commit to Mutalisks, even if it's a small amount, even if it's, if it's like four or five Mutas, then this build can absolutely crush. Definitely a little bit of a risk, though. Right now, we have Rain sitting outside of his choke with three Zealots. Another one coming out. Some cannons being added in here as well. Plus one still on the way. The Citadel, of course, going to be a little bit late since he's putting so much, uh, so many resources rather into that Corsair production. And of course, that is part of the reason why your storm is so late. You just don't really have the gas resources. Now, a second gas is being started and Scourge are being made. We don't see a Hydralis Den, or, nor do we see an Evolution Chamber yet. So as this Corsair scouts, I think he's going to become more confident that mutalisks are going to be coming and in fact there they are five mutas on the way so yeah it does look like that anyways just based on what what saxory had right like generally you'll have the evolution chamber started and the hydralis den started so you can get your your speed and range upgrades quickly then the scourge kind of push things back and you're you're totally fine so now the zealots walking out they don't have their plus one yet but he is trying to keep some pressure on mutas are hatching hydralis den is on the way so he might just sit on the five mutas that's like a very common number because that one shot's a probe but yeah the corsair is definitely going to be able to punish pretty hard there's the pylon uh jail there for this probe citadel coming up as well and there's the harassment so rain's actually going to be happy to lose a couple probes there well not in the act of losing probes but just the fact that we have, uh, you know, a, a bunch of mutas that have been made. So he brings out the five Corsairs to push these mutas back before losing too much. And that might be a big enough clump for Saxory to realize what's going on. Four more sets of Scourge on the way. So this is probably going to turn into a rather large air engage where the Scourge really kind of need to hit. Already an Overlord falling. Uh, the plus one is not even coming on the Corsairs, by the way. He skipped that, which you might think like, Oh, well, you know, the Corsairs, like, would do so much better with plus one. But, you know, just getting them out is so much money anyways. Now, we have a counterattack coming in with those Mutas, and the Corsairs will push it back. Yeah, this is this is a very aggressive two Stargate Corsair without that plus one. It, it, like, of course, the plus one is huge for Corsairs. But it's like, let's say that you're doing like a two factory build. It's not it, like you could go plus one with it, but it's it, it costs a lot and you just kind of want to attack, right? Like that's that seems to be what Rain is doing here. He's getting his Temple Archives as quickly as he can. He's just getting enough Corsairs to be a real big problem at the moment. And you can see these Mutas trying to do some moving shots here. He does not turn to fight because he knows uh, about the Scourge following as well. Flies over that Spore. Pretty good defense here from Saxory. And in fact, going to be able to kill this Corsair, I think. More Scourge coming up for a flank. Look at the Corsair count. My God. Eight Corsairs still, despite losing some. And we're going to see if he's actually able to turn and fight here at all. This is this could be rough. The Scourge are very, very close. And look at that. Even when he turns, Saxory spreads and comes in on flanks. Really superbly done. And only four Corsairs remain. Okay, let's take a look. Hydras right now coming out. Range, speed, plus one Hydralisk attack. Psystorm has been started by Rain. 
I I still kind of feel like Saxory here has a little bit of an edge. I just I feel like he's been outplaying uh, Rain a little bit. Now Zealots coming out across the map. They do have legs now. They do have plus one now. What's that actual count of the Hydralisks at? Let's take a look. So he's got like at least twelve there plus lings. And this is a great Sim City. I don't see these Zealots doing anything. They turn around. The one DT tried to poke in, almost died, but he did get out of there. And yeah, yeah, like Saxory has kind of parried everything so far this game. A lot of gateways on the way, even some more Corsairs being added in, it looks like. Or maybe those were just the ones that were left over flying out. I didn't really keep too much track. Let's see. All right, so he has six Corsairs here joining them all up at the moment. And those will still be somewhat useful, but really right now it's about getting enough Psy Storm out that you're going to be fine against all these Hydras. Uh, and it looks like Saxory is getting ready to move. He has range, and he's about to have speed. A ton of drones being made. So really work on that economy as well. And is Rain going to be able to absorb these Hydras? He has the uh, Dragoon range on the way a little bit later than what we see from Rain very oftentimes, but of course this was a two Stargate Corsair opener, so definitely requires a different type of mid game. He's going to have about three storms, and we'll see if those three storms are going to be enough here. That's a good dodge from Saxry. Saxry moving down with those Hydras. Okay, backing up a little bit. You know, he did drone really heavily just a moment ago. So he's getting back into Lurker Hydra. There is a Robo out. So uh, definitely Rain is going to be able to get some detection. And a ton of Dragoons being made. So he is getting into the type of army that he feels like he needs. There's not going to be an attack timing for him. Maybe he can get over here and take his third, but I really don't think he's going to be able to actually attack. The thing is, he's going to have to do something with all these speed zealots. These are not going to scale very well as lurkers come out. So maybe he tries to either run some around for like a flank. Or maybe, yeah, like to, to block the movement of Hydra so he can get good storms, something like that. But like, you can't just expand and sit there on this many Zealots. You need to kind of trade them out a little bit or the critical mass of Zerg is going to make them look silly. Now, a ton of Dragoons coming out. Gets over here. Going <laughs> to see an egg morphing on, uh, on where his Nexus is supposed to go. There is an Observer on the way. Uh, he did wait a little bit for the Observatory. But he will get that going. Corsair's checking where those Hydras are. A lot of Lurkers being made here as well. This is really annoying, actually. Moves back, and the Hydra's trying to pick off some... Uh, and he does get a High Templar there. So very nice pick off. Sacks about four or five Hydras for that. And the one Lurker blocking the Nexus for a very long time. That, I haven't really seen that. Someone run up and just morph a Lurker there, but... It actually has stalled this out. Like, he's wanted to make that for a while now. Now, here comes the actual attack. Some storms go out. And the storms are pretty good, but there's so many lurkers here to deal with these zealots. And you can see that the splash damage really, really hurting them. Now, he does micro nicely, gets on top of them, but there's no more size storms. So the hydras are actually just going to eat through these dragoons. The zealots are still here to tank, and the fight will look kind of okay while they're still there. But as soon as they evaporate, and you can see rain starts to pull back, as soon as your zealots evaporate, the dragoons are basically dead. This game not looking very good for rain right now. Push in with these hydras, busting down a bunch of cannons. GG is called. Not a, not a huge surprise. This game really, I think, showed... You know, I'm talking up rain quite a bit, but like I said, Saxry, very underrated, like such a strong Zerg player, and he just looked clean in every moment of this game. He blocked everything rain did. Really well done. Hope you guys enjoyed. GG, thanks for watching.